All right, well, we've looked at how to run calculations in the drilling drill sub-op. And now I'd like to move into what some of the differences are for a drilling trip sub-op. And remember, to get to the sub-op, we just come back to the summary grid and double-click on the sub-op that we're interested in. So I've just pulled up the sub-op for tripping in 12 and a quarter inch hole. The logic that ERA uses uh, for tripping simulations is that the string can be moving up the hole or down the hole, whereas for drilling sub-ops, we're assuming that the string can only move forward, so there are no pickup curves on any of our tension plots, you'll notice, in, um, in the drill sub-op. But in the trip sub-op, we can look at both slacking off and picking up. What is uh, uh, also a little bit different is we don't have a rate of penetration model in tripping. We're assuming that we're not doing any drilling activities. So some of the inputs and what they mean are a little bit different. For example, if I have weight on bit or torque on bit applied in the tripping sub-op, that means that, for example, with weight on bit, that there's an obstruction on the bit as I'm trying to trip in the hole. Or if I was to assign a negative value to the weight on bit, that would mean that there is overpull applied. So I'll show you how to create a couple of different plots that are a little bit unique to the tripping condition. Uh, this is also where we would create a surge and swab plot. In the drilling sub-op, we uh, cannot create a surge and swab graph. That's where we would do that here in the tripping sub-op. So uh, let me just uh, move to a two-plot view where we've got torque on the right and hook load on the left. You'll notice that there is no torque. I've got my limits drawn, but there's no torque simulation. And that's because as uh, a default, we're assuming that we have a trip speed, positive trip speed of 100 foot per minute and a rotary speed of zero. If I wanted to simulate rotating the string off bottom, just simply rotating the pipe, I'd have to put in a rotary speed and take the tripping speed down to zero. So as you can see now, I have a rotating off bottom tension curve or hook load curve because I have block weight entered. Uh, and then on the right, you can see the off bottom torque for a variety of different friction factors. Uh, these curves are all drawn in green because uh, I'm stationary, just rotating off bottom. If I wanted to show reaming, either reaming in the hole or reaming out of the hole, then I would need to enter in a value for trip speed or run speed. If I'm tripping at one minute of stand or about 100 feet per minute, you'll notice now that uh, for tripping in, I get blue curves, and for tripping out, I get uh, red curves. So this would really be reaming in and reaming out. And then, of course, I also have reaming torques. And the reaming torque is different depending on whether or not I'm going down or I'm going up. So you've got a variety of different curves. What you may want to do to simplify a graph, if you're trying to create something for a report, and, and maybe what you're just wanting to show is the torque that should be expected while I'm reaming in the hole. Well, I could do that by double-clicking on my torque plot, um, right-clicking on this grid, and showing only the slack-off values. And when I show just the slack off values, what this plot will display is my surface torque reaming in the hole. Now, of course, to make a tension or hook load plot that corresponds with this reaming in graph, I would want to double click here and just show the slack off curves. And sometimes for reference, I'll, I'll throw in the rotating off bottom line just to show people what the difference is between stationary and reaming in. So the combination of these two graphs can be quite helpful when we're doing a reaming in sort of operation. Uh, as always, if I come back to settings and I hit reset, it will return the plots back to their original defaults. Uh, let's move on to surge and swab. If I wanted to create a surge and swab plot, I could do that by cycling on over. You can see on the left I have uh, ECD. Well, really it's not circulating density unless I have the pumps going. Uh, but we think of ECD similarly uh, with surge and swab. If I'm wanting to show a surge and swab plot, typically do that with sensitivity to run speed. So I click on the radio button, run speed. The default value of uh, 100 foot per minute is my base case or middle value. And then the tripping speed will be increased by 40 feet per minute and decreased by 40 feet per minute. So when I pull up this plot, take off the rotary speed here real quick. When I pull up this plot, what it's showing is a range from 20 feet per minute to 180 feet per minute, slacking off and picking up and rotating off bottom. That's actually something that will be corrected in the future. Of course, when we're rotating off bottom, 
we're not sensitive to run speed, so there should really only be one curve for rotating off bottom. If I wanted to create a overpull calculation, I could do that if I cycle back here to the left. And uh, what I'm wanting to show now is what it looks like for various levels of overpull, sensitivity to overpull. I'd have a locked-in friction factor of 0.25. I'd change my radio button to wait on bit. And then I would apply an overpull of a negative value. Let's say negative 100,000 pounds. And I would do a sensitivity or increment of 50,000 pounds. And now what you're looking at is a real mess. Uh, but if I pull up this plot by double-clicking and then right-click, um, pick up only, what it will show me is the surface tension versus depth, or really surface hook load versus depth, for five different levels of overpull at the bit. Remember, this is overpull at bit. From a base case of 100,000 pounds up to 200,000 pounds overpull, or uh, down to no overpull. All calculated for a 0.25 friction factor. If I happen to be rotating and applying that overpull, if I was back reaming out of the hole, let's say, uh, if I'm back reaming out of the hole at 60 RPM, then uh, this graph on the right, I would need to do a little editing too. I'd double click on this, right click, and just show the pickup curves. So this is back reaming torque and back reaming hook load for a range of overpull. And I'll go back to my little gear here and reset the plots. That's just a real brief overview of some of the things that you can do in the tripping sub-op.